Graphite in the battery value chain is the anode material that we use in all lithium ion batteries. It has the highest specific energy of all materials and that's what makes it particularly attractive uh, for use. So hello, today um, I am here for the one-to-one -one global online critical materials event and I'm here with Adam Best, Principal Research Scientist at CSIRO and we're going to talk all about graphite. So Adam, thanks for joining me today. Thanks Amy, appreciate the opportunity. And uh, so graphite seems to be um, one of the hottest topics, uh, at least that Adam is experiencing lately. Um, so maybe you can start by giving us a quick breakdown between, you know, what is graphite? What's the difference between natural and synthetic? And, you know, yeah. Are there end uses it's different? Sure. So gra graphite is a, an allotrope of carbon. So it's a, obviously has a, a layered interlayered spacing. So it's very crystalline in its structure. And those layered spacings allows us to use it for an anode in a battery because we're able to intercalate lithium into those layers. Uh, that's really the criticality here because uh, graphite having a range of different properties such as uh, allotropes, I should say. Diamond, for instance, the hardest of all car carbon products, but also amorphous carbon or hard carbons are not able to do that. So the right type of graphite is actually, or carbon slash graphite is required for batteries. Mm -hmm. In terms of the sources of graphite, obviously we have natural graphite, which we discussed today, but uh, synthetic graphite is the dominant supply uh, for battery technologies. And that starts out as petroleum pitch coke that's heated at over two and a half thousand degrees Celsius for a week uh, in order to turn it into a graphitized compound. And that's the dominant product that's currently used uh, in batteries. Natural graphite is obviously a mineral resource which has mined and is obviously has an ore body and has all sorts of impurities that have to be removed. So there's a range of different processing that needs to be done there in order to liberate that graphite in order to be able to use it in uh, batteries. As you mentioned, there are a range of different applications. So batteries is just but one, mm -hmm. uh, but refractories, electrodes for al aluminium electro winning, lubrication products, all sorts of things are used by graphite. So there's a, it's quite a range of applications there. Okay, great. And maybe you can talk a little bit more about graphite's exact role within kind of the battery value chain. Yeah, so the graphite in the battery value chain is the anode material that we use in all lithium ion batteries. It has the highest specific energy of all materials and that's what makes it particularly attractive uh, for use. So graphite is uh, then used in its forms as a flake material. We then process it to spherinize it in order to reduce its surface area and also to improve its packing density. That's really important for the volumetric or gravimetric energy density in a battery. Once we process that material and make that spherinized, we can do some further last step purification because lithium will react with any impurities in the battery. So the more pure the material, the better the performance of the device that we'll get. So purification is a very important step. Uh, and then lastly, we do some coat, we coat those particles with an additional carbon material to reduce its surface area. And then they, again, then it's used by the battery manufacturer to turn it into an anode material uh, that's then used in today's batteries that we use today. Okay, interesting. Um, so looking at mining and processing, can you give us a bit of insight into kind of the processes involved here? Sure. So my, uh, natural graphite specifically comes from a range of different geological sources. So it's really important once uh, a miner actually under, has, a, has found a graphite resource that they understand the geology that, on which that graphite is found. So that may be including the flake size there. Also the impurity matrix, so uh, particularly is it an aluminium iron silicate or is it other particularly intractable materials that may be there because you will then design your purification, uh, final step purification to do to deal with those impurities but also in the first stage particularly the, 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 the mining process, the crushing, the flotation, the screening, all of that needs to be optimized in order to be able to generate a high purity product that can then be do the, the, the further stage processing. So parts of that include uh, looking at the ESG requirements here mm -hmm. and using sustainable chemicals and some sustainable processes in order that you can actually have a really strong ESG, which is something that the consumer today is really, really looking for. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so where are you seeing kind of emerging opportunities? So uh, CIRA is often touted as kind of a big potential here in Australia. Uh, why is this? And are there other similar types of projects around? Yeah, so we see lots of the demand for graphite. And this is simply because the burgeoning demand for graphite 
uh, for batteries as a whole. So there's been a, 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 a tailing off in probably in production in China around artificial graphite. Even they see some of the challenges around production using pitch petroleum, pitch coke, and the energy and pollution aspects of that. Mm -hmm. So this is now opening up other opportunities to look at mined graphite. And that could be from places such as Mozambique and Tanzania, where Australian miners are also active, uh, but also here in Australia as well. So there's um, mineral uh, deposits in Queensland, South Australia and Western Australia, which are now being actively explored uh, to see about their potential for use in, in battery activity. So that's just Australia, but there are other countries as well that have graphite deposits, which I think you'll see even greater activity in because as, as countries seek to localise production, they are all going to go looking for their own resources in order to be able to manufacture their own battery technology. Sure, similar to every other yeah, every metal. Other, yeah, that's right, every <laughs> that other metal, seeing. exactly. Um, and um, are there any you know, potential threats that you're seeing um, on, on the industry or you know, graphite's role within the battery value chain? So we've seen the emergence of a range of new battery technologies now because people are looking for other solutions. Uh, lithium has, obviously has its challenges around critical mineral uh, act, uh, accessibility and availability. So uh, new chemistry such as redox flow, sodium iron and others are now emerging. So there's uh, obviously some challenges in that uh, those batteries will use different materials. So in the case of sodium, the anode is a hard carbon. So it's not a graphitic carbon, it's, it's more of a high surface area, porous material. So it doesn't use a mineral based product. So that chemistry though is very low, is lower energy density than lithium. It actually will suit a much different market. So it may take some market share, but I don't think it's gonna impact on the broader spectrum of opportunity for graphite as a whole. There are other chemistries emerging as well, but I think there's plenty of growth yet to happen in the graphite market. Absolutely. And finally, um, do you want to talk a little bit about CSIRO and what you guys are doing uh, within this space? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. So yes, CSIRO, Australia's National Research Agency. We're very involved in the development of different uh, chemistries for batteries, but also in the mineral processing as well. So we're very interested in how we can actually sustainably produce critical minerals that can go not only into energy storage devices, but also into other renewable energy generation uh, technologies, such as solar or even wind. So where we have to recover critical minerals and process them into either magnet metals or polysilicon or whatever that may be, we're very interested in developing technologies around that. And we actually have a, a mission in development called the Renewable Energy Powerhouse that you can find on our website, which talks about how we want to turn Australia into a renewable energy superpower through mineral processing, through uh, activities around that to develop technologies that can uh, support the renewable energy transformation. All right. Well, that all sounds great. Adam, thanks for joining me here. Thank you today. very much for the opportunity, Amy.